Banshee rides, Yeti encounters, time-traveling rovers. Disney's Animal Kingdom can be a wild time, with rides that you want to experience over and over again. But which rides are the best in this park, and which may not be worth your time? Find out today here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. We go to Disney's Animal Kingdom every day. And rest assured, the rides here never get old. But that doesn't mean every ride in Animal Kingdom hits it out of the park for every person on our team. So which rides will be the best for your group and which will you need to hit the brakes on? That's what we're going to unearth together. Y'all ready for this? Time to grab your safari hat because we're going on a ride hunt. All right, we're starting out with the best rides. Disney's Animal Kingdom doesn't have a whole lot of rides, but the rides it does have are some of the most memorable across the Disney parks. For the quintessential Disney's Animal Kingdom experience, there are four key rides I'd consider to be the main in the park. As in, if you get the chance to experience them, then the rest of the rides you hit up after those are just icing on top of the cake. So let's take a look at the top dogs. First off, you got the ride that tends to rack up the highest wait times each day, across all the parks. Flight of Passage over in Pandora World of Avatar. Flight of Passage is a 3D aerial adventure through the jungles and seas and caverns of Pandora for riders who are 44 inches or taller. During this simulator, you get to ride on the back of your own banshee and you feel it breathe too, although it was a little weird on my last trip. It was kind of, I feel like they might need to close for a refurbishment on that breathing. But anyway, this screen-based attraction is beautiful. It is eye candy. There's so much to look at here. Lots of folks refer to this ride as Soren on steroids, though we still love Soren with our whole hearts too. Next, we've got Dinosaur in Dinoland USA, which will be more of your half dark ride, half thrill ride hybrid experience. As the story goes, Dr. Seeker needs an iguanodon and he needs your help to bring that iguanodon from the past into the present. Don't ask questions, Dr. Seeker knows what he's doing. To get the job done, you'll hop into a time rover and be transported into the prehistoric era. But brace yourself, things get bumpy and dangerous. This intense rover adventure with so many animatronic dinos is made for guests 40 inches and taller, but I'm still terrified of it. For a more chill experience, head over to Kilimanjaro Safaris. Kilimanjaro is over in the Africa section and is a 20 minute tour, more or less, across Animal Kingdom's own African savannas. This is like going to the zoo, but A, driving straight through the exhibits and B, speed running the entire thing. There are so many different animals you can potentially see during your ride, including elephants, lions, giraffes, rhinos, gazelle, crocodiles, hippos, ostrich, etc., etc. No ride through is ever the same twice since the animals can be unpredictable, but we'll talk more about that later on. And this ride is good for all ages. You just gotta make sure your kids are sitting on their keisters during the entire tour. And finally, you've got the park's only roller coaster, Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain. You start this Asian expedition nice and easy with just a lovely stroll up one of the Himalayan mountains, but when you reach the top, that's when things start to get a little hairy. Turns out there's a giant Yeti who's already living up in these snowy conditions, and and you've been warned about him in the line, my friends. He's not too keen on having you as an unexpected visitor. Expedition Everest is a coaster that goes backwards, takes on a steep drop, and brings you up close and personal with the Yeti himself. You must be 44 inches to ride this coaster. So those are the four must-do rides. Now what about for themed queues? If you know Disney World or have at very least heard about it, then you already know that the parks can get real busy real fast. And the more crowded they get, the longer the ride lines can be. For parks like Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, we tend to recommend at least looking at Disney Genie Plus to figure out if investing in this line bypassing service will be able to help you maximize your visit. And don't worry, we've got videos to help you with Genie Plus in every single park. But when it comes to Animal Kingdom, it really doesn't have enough rides to justify needing lightning lanes during average crowd level days. That being said, that doesn't mean wait times can't get extensive in Animal Kingdom. Fortunately though, several of the rides in this park have queue lines that'll keep you pretty well entertained even if you decide not to invest in Genie Plus. Flight of Passage is one of the best examples. This queue is heavily themed from its outdoor to its indoor portions. The outside portion of the queue gives you a crystal clear look across this world of Avatar. It's floating mountains, it's lush plant life, beautiful waterfalls, 
But once you get inside, you'll make your way through several different zones and areas, including a cave with wall art, a bioluminescent forest, and the coolest section of all, the laboratory, where you can see a full-size avatar just chilling in an incubation tank. They call him Hank in the Tank. This is also the only queue across all the parks that includes a mid-queue restroom, which has saved our lives on more than one occasion. Now, Expedition Everest has also won us over with its indoor-outdoor queue theming. You'll get to wander through the Himalayan Escapes Tour Company offices, Tashi's General Store and Bar for all of your travel supply needs, and the old tea warehouse that Professor Pumba Dorje converted into a Yeti museum. Each twist and turn of this queue adds another layer to the story of the Forbidden Mountain, so you can't say you weren't warned about that Yeti member. There are several red flags. Lots, my friends. Kali River Rapids over in the Asia section of the park can get to be swelteringly hot during the afternoon, but if you get in line for it once the sun starts to go down, you can really appreciate the detail going on here. Once you're in the line, you start getting the real sense you've stumbled into a jungle where distant temples and ruins wait to be explored. There are plenty of artifacts and carvings and statues all waiting to be discovered along the way. And if you look in the last room at the end of the queue, you'll see a small painting of Michael Jackson riding along in a raft. Why? Because this was his favorite ride in all of Disney World and Imagineers wanted to commemorate that. Now, it's tough to be a bug over in Discovery Island isn't technically a ride, but it sure is a thrilling 4D experience themed around Pixar's A Bug's Life characters, and we've got a lot of feelings about it, which I'm gonna get into in the next half of this video. But I wanted to give it a shout out for its cue, since it's literally inside the icon of the park, the Tree of Life. As you wait for this show, you'll get to see the Tree of Life from a whole new vantage point with some intricate animal carvings that you would have never seen otherwise. Plus, the punny bug-themed musical posters are pretty cute too. Now, what if you need rides for all ages with no height requirement? Well, if you're traveling with younger riders who don't want to be left out on all the fun just because they're not quite tall enough yet to ride the big kid attractions, then you'll want to keep this list of rides close to you at all times so you know what your family will be able to ride together. As stated earlier, Kilimanjaro Safaris has no height requirement and neither does It's Tough to Be a Bug, though I'd proceed with caution on that one. Navi River Journey, the second ride over in Pandora, is another all-ages experience where you'll board a slow going boat and float on past different Pandora forest settings that are all glowing and neon and cool looking. You'll also get to see one of the most impressive Disney animatronics there. Head toward the end of the ride and the shaman will be there to bid you farewell and seeing her is worth the experience alone. Does your kiddo have an affinity for aerial carousels? Then you're in luck. Dino Land USA has one called Triceratops Spin and that's it. It's just a bunch of Triceratops that slowly spin around in a circle just like Dumbo. And if we're being technical here, Animal Kingdom's Wildlife Express train is built for all ages too. This train will take you over to another section of the park that you won't be able to reach on foot. It's called Rafiki's Planet Watch. This area has several other activities for families to explore with lots less crowds, such as the affection section petting zoo, the animation experience, and the science center. If you want to go on a ride that not everyone in your group is tall enough to experience yet, make sure to use Rider Switch to make sure that everybody who wants to ride and is able to ride gets the chance to ride. Rider Switch lets part of your group wait in line for a ride while one person from your group stays back to hang out with the non-rider or riders. Then the folks who waited in line can switch out with the person who stayed back once they're finished riding. The person who stayed back will be able to use the Lightning Lane queue with one other member from their group to take their turn on the ride without having to wait in a humongous line all over again. Again. To set up Rider Switch, talk to the cast member at the front of the ride, they'll get you all set up. Now, what if you or someone in your group needs to use a wheelchair or an ECV during your visit? Then you may be nervous when it comes to how accessible Animal Kingdom actually is. When it comes to Disney World rides, there are different levels of accessibility for every ride, meaning there are some queues that accommodate wheelchairs and ECVs, and some that don't. So let me quickly break down which rides in Animal Kingdom have the best accessibility. For Dinosaur, Expedition Everest, Kali River Rapids, and Navi River Journey, you can typically remain in your wheelchair throughout the ride's queue, but you must exit your chair to enter the ride vehicle. On Kilimanjaro Safaris and Triceratops Spin, you can stay in your wheelchair throughout the queue and the ride, but if you're in an ECV, you will have to transfer to a wheelchair before boarding. Cast members will provide you with a wheelchair either at the entrance of the attraction or somewhere in the queue. And for Flight of Passage, you'll have a couple of transfers you'll need to do before boarding. While wheelchairs are fine to have in line, ECVs are not, so you'll have to switch if need be before you get into the queue. Then, before boarding, you'll have to switch over from the wheelchair and into the ride vehicle. 
Okay, now it's time to talk about the worst rides in Animal Kingdom. Now, interestingly, we've already given a shout out to each of the rides in Animal Kingdom. But like I said earlier, not all rides are built for all types of riders. So the best rides can also be the worst rides. So let's talk about motion sickness. For those four quintessential rides I shouted out at the beginning of the video, well, three of those have the potential to make you queasy. I'm not saying they definitely will. It all really depends on how sensitive you are to certain ride types. For some, they may not do a thing to you besides be fun. But if you're someone who's like sensitive to those 3D screen rides, that's literally all Flight of Passage is. You'll sit on a motorcycle type seat with restraints pressed against your back while the ride simulates quick turns and sharp drops over the mountains through the forests and across the sea. Meanwhile, rides like Dinosaur and Expedition Everest can mess with your stomach and head for different reasons. Both rides are fast and jerky. For Dinosaur, your time rover is going to start and stop quickly as it takes some rather sharp turns, and the ride is also pretty dark, so not being able to see the track in front of you could mean those quick turns might catch you off guard. For Expedition Everest, I mean, you're literally going to be thrust into a pitch black tunnel while speeding backwards up a mountain, and that's a blast, but it can be majorly disorienting. And interestingly, I didn't used to have a problem with that when I was in my 20s, but now that I'm in my 40s, I have a big problem with it. Just because you deal with motion sickness doesn't mean you need to miss out on some of the best rides in the park, though. If you're sensitive to simulators or 3D rides or just being slung around on a roller coaster, you'll want to pre-game with those over-the-counter motion sickness meds, like the non-drowsy Dramamine or the Nausea Relief C-bands that you can wear around your wrist. FYI, the C-bands don't tend to work for me. I gotta take the Dramamine. Also remember to take breaks between rides instead of hitting them back to back. That way you can allow your stomach to settle. You can refuel on water, maybe have a banana, which all those astronauts say help with queasiness in the tummy, and recharge before the next ride. Also, may I remind you not to have a bunch of margaritas at Dawa Bar before you go on Expedition Everest. Just saying. Okay, so what are the worst rides for time management? This is something nobody thinks about in Disney World and they really, really should. Let's say you've got a dining reservation coming up. Maybe it's an Animal Kingdom or maybe it's somewhere else entirely like Disney Springs or one of the hotels. If you wanna get in line for one last ride on something before making your way over to a reservation, you're not gonna wanna choose any of these three experiences. Both rides in Pandora, Navi River Journey, and Flight of Passage can rack up intense wait times, and sometimes those waits can wind up being longer than originally projected, especially if they're experiencing technical difficulties. So if you've only got an hour to get to, say, Disney Springs, meaning you've also got to factor in the bus ride over to the shopping district too, then don't get in line for a ride that's gonna push you past your advanced dining reservation return time. But I think the ride that tends to trip us up the most when it comes to time management is Kilimanjaro Safaris. Does that shock anyone out there? On average, the wait times for Kilimanjaro is around 30 to 40 minutes, and that's not awful for a Disney ride, but remember, this isn't a two-minute roller coaster we're talking about. This is a 20-plus minute guided safari tour, and that plus is super flexible. We aren't kidding when we say the animals can be unpredictable. On several occasions, our safari has been even longer just because an ostrich decided to stumble out into the middle of the road and demand attention. When this happens, animal caretakers of the park will work to make sure the animal gets off the path as quickly as possible so the ride can resume. But these free roaming animals have their own agenda and can be stubborn when it comes to actually obeying requests. And of course, your ride vehicle can't move anywhere until that animal has decided to leave. So if Kilimanjaro Safaris is on your must-do list, just make sure you're not getting in line for this one right before a pre-scheduled engagement. Now let's talk about the worst rides for stormy weather. If a storm's brewing, do not, I repeat, do not get in line for one of Animal Kingdom's outdoor rides, which is almost all of them. If lightning is in the nearby vicinity, rides like Expedition Everest, Triceratops Spin, Kali River Rapids, those are gonna close up shop until the storm has passed. Keep an eye on the AccuWeather app or whatever app you like to see what the radar is gonna look like during your visit. If you notice the storm's gonna start rolling in within the next hour, then skip getting in line for the outdoor rides for now and hit up some of the indoor ones instead. Or head to a different indoor experience to kill some time. Animal Kingdom is an outdoor heavy park, but it also has lots of indoor shows and attractions too. Now, what about younger kids who don't like the scary stuff or older kids like me who don't like the scary stuff? So even though the Yeti in Expedition Everest remains stationary these days and he's Disco Yeti, because he only looks like he's moving due to the strobe light effects because he's broken, 
That furry guy is huge and mean looking and reaching down for you as you fly on past. So even if your kid is tall enough to ride, this coaster can still be intimidating since the story of being chased by a Yeti is super prominent all throughout the queue line. Dinosaur is also one of those rides where mean looking creatures will get all up in your face and only these guys aren't stationary and that Carnotaurus is moving towards you really fast. Dinosaur is dark and intimidating and loud enough that I still find myself covering my ears and closing my eyes after all this time. It's impressive, but kids and adults who are more sensitive to sound and jump scare scenarios might want to skip this one. I always do. And then there's the granddaddy of them all, the scariest attraction maybe ever, and I won't let you tell me otherwise, it's tough to be a bug. Now, this is not a ride, I understand that, so it doesn't technically belong in this video, but if you don't like spiders dropping from the ceiling or hornets stinging you or beetles crawling underneath your butt, then this may not be the show for you. Here's the thing, if bugs don't freak you out like they freak me out, then more power to you. But if you'd rather not be scarred by Hopper and his bug buddies, then I promise you it's okay to skip over this one. By the way, if you have kids who are maybe not handling this as well as you expected them to, you can get up and walk out of the show, y'all. Those doors do open even though they're closed when the show is going on. You can get up and walk out. And I had to do that with my kid when I was there once. We literally just had to get up and leave. And if you don't want to be in the seat, you can also get up and stand to watch the show. Not a lot of people do that. You may want to leave. They may tell you to leave, but you're not prisoner in there. You can leave the show, any show in Disney World, if you need to. Just a heads up on that. Because, you know, there are times when your baby's like freaking out or you're freaking out and having a panic attack or whatever and you need to get out of there. You can. Just heads up. Okay. Now that I've shared all of my hidden away anxious behaviors, we have finally made it to the end. So thanks for exploring all these epic and not so epic Animal Kingdom rides with me. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of what you need to prioritize during your next visit. But if you're looking for even more Animal Kingdom tips and tricks, we've got tons. I love this park. So we're going to explore the restaurants, the shows, the hidden secrets. We've got videos on all of that for you. So make sure to check those out. And as always, keep checking back here for more park dates to come. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.